I just sent her to see if she can um, access it now. Just sent you another link. Yeah. So we'll pause for Denise to, to get on to the meeting. Hi, thank you. Okay, you can. Good. So we're, we're just um, starting to talk about the decision sheet topics uh, that came out of a brainstorm from the end of the facilities and finance committee, two days of meeting with our cost centers. Uh, so you have a heart, you have an electronic copy of that. Denise just sent that out to everybody. Um, so we can just take a moment to, to go through this. I think the biggest thing is that these these are considerations. These are not decisions that the Facilities and Finance Committee met, made. They're just ideas that as we were going through the presentations, we talked about. So the first thing to note is just that the new some new positions are on here. Um, and we put those on, the committee put those on just because they're not bodies that are currently here, so we're not impacting somebody who's already employed in our district. So we can just look through those. So in addition to that, we have um, a storage shed um, at MHA and then three large buses. And then um, the medical insurance, uh, an adjustment to that. And then remove the local increase for school nutrition and remove a local increase for adult ed. Uh, and then we have, uh, out underneath that, we have recent things that have come up that were not put in the, that first draft budget that you have that we just need to think about. Um, and we can have Kevin talk to the lighting, and then we can talk about um, the painting for limited classrooms. But Kevin, do you want to talk up just a briefly about the lighting projects? Yes, um, and these were numbers that were not in the um, the budget presentation when we did the um, <coughs> presentation last week. Um, basically, it's the junior high, Norton School, and Vivian Hussey School as far as upgrading parking lot and walkway lighting at them three facilities. Um, it's all original lighting. Junior High's 1968 lighting. So um, basically... Uh, middle school? Middle school. Sorry, Kevin. So, so simply put, um, basically the project cost for the Junior High is Roughly twenty-one thousand. Eric Dalton seven thousand. Vivian Hussey eleven thousand. Currently, right now, um, the outdoor lighting is very poor. There um, is in desperate need of upgrades um, with incentives through Efficiency Maine. Um, we roughly get back real quick now. Eight, what nine thousand dollars in incentives from Efficiency Maine for doing energy upgrades um, and save. About well, 300 bucks a year on outdoor lighting, um, middle school. Was that better? Thank you. You're welcome. 312 Norton and roughly 800 a year at the Aussie uh, school. 
Again, all original lighting that's there now, um, and that's going to LED. Um, pretty much a 15 year warranty on all the new lighting. So if something goes wrong over the next 15 years, which by then I should not be here. <laughs> um, it's going to be all set and paid for. Thank you. And then the other consideration that we had that wasn't in the original, original budget was um, the painting of classrooms at Lebanon Elementary School. And that came in, and I can have Patty speak to this a little bit, but part of why this came in late is um, we had the whole building project in the vote, and that did not go through. So then we had to do some work about thinking about what we wanted to do. And Patty, do you just want to talk about the hiring process that you've had and, and first impressions and everything? Sure. I think we hesitated to do a lot of work at LES, thinking that we were eventually going to have a new addition. Um, we did paint in the halls and the gym, so that's kind of what you see when you first walk in. But but it has been um, challenging when you bring potential candidates in and they walk into those classrooms to see where they're going to teach because they, they really do need to be, have a little bit of a makeover. Um, so that's why we suggested if we were going to do something that would have probably the biggest aesthetic impact, if we were going to be here for a while, it would be to paint the classrooms. And this is a rough quote um, based on the projects that were done here this past summer. So we'll get a more firm quote. But those are just two considerations for additions. I know we're trying to talk about not addition, not no addition. So, um, but those are important pieces that we'll talk about as well. So I didn't know, uh, we have everybody collectively here, um, if we wanted to add other things to the brainstorm list. Um, and we can just take notes on those as we're going through. Or are there initial questions on this list? <coughs> So we do have some, Denise just reminded me that at the end of the uh, Facilities and Finance Committee meeting, we did talk about some positions potentially moving into uh, some of the grants that we have received through um, the, the federal government. So they, it has to be impact, impacted by COVID. So there are some positions that we feel we could certainly make a very strong case that they are impacted by COVID or um, as a result of what we need to do programming wise for our students based on coming back and seeing um, just some needs this year. So those positions are um, the, I'm just went here. So the regular education behavior teacher for grades nine <coughs> high school, we thought that that could move um, into one of the grants. The non-security resource officer at Noble High School can also be moved in to the grant. Social emotional ed tech three between Hussey and Knowlton or will be housed full time in one of those buildings. And the current um, ed tech will also then be housed in the other of those buildings. And we also thought that the high level math position for Noble Middle School, so that's advanced math classes, um, could be there. The halftime nurse certainly could be based on, on COVID and ongoing uh, pieces that we're going to have next year with that. And we also uh, thought the communications director could be placed in there because is that an additional person? That is. We had um, Laura Cashel doing that, and that was a stipend at twenty thousand dollars. That was part time. That was part time. So that's making it full time. We're making it full time. Okay, so that savings would be. $386,000. If we put those positions, we move them into the grant. And then just take it out. Right. We would just postpone. So the recommendation then would be to postpone the storage shed as well. Didn't we do that last year too? We've been on there at least two years. Yes. There were two. There were two buildings listed this year, um, and one of them uh, came out, and then this is the other. And we have lots of storage issues in the district. 
most schools have an issue storing furniture and things that they need to keep, but don't have, you know, they're taking up room in their buildings that could be used for other things sometimes. So. When do you get the exact increase on insurance? Is it like April or April something? April 1st. So this is a guess. So this is okay. absolutely right. a guess. So um, one of the things to know, again, about the, that medical, just for those of you um, who uh, want to hear this again, um, mm -hmm. each year um, Anthem produces what's called um, a medical loss ratio. And basically what it does is evaluates how much we paid in premiums, versus how much they paid out in our claims for people associated with our district, both employees and retirees. And if you get a one, um, if you get a one or a 100, it's, um, it means that you, you paid them exactly what they paid out in claims, You're, you broke even. If, you're, if they paid out more for you, you have a, a number greater than one. And if you pay less, then you have a low number. We have a very low number. We have a 71.79. Um, it is our second lowest uh, ratio since, uh, in the last nine years, but since 2016, I believe. Um, we currently have a 5% increase in the budget. We will find out um, the Benefits Trust announces in later in March, in the next couple of weeks, their highest increase percentage and from there, it's a, it's a good place for us to guess and try to figure out where we might fall so that we feel a little confident about this. So I've been tracking these. Um, based on this number, I would expect we could save uh, some money, go down from 5% to maybe 3%. The last time we had such low numbers, you know, we could go to zero. Um, I wouldn't count on it. Like that doesn't, that's not a comfortable number for me. But um, basically, we have to wait and see. And what we do is we have to approve the budget that end of that first week in April. So on April 1st, Mary Ellen and Patty and I in the office, as soon as we get that number, we're pushing it through all of the cost centers to try to figure out what our real savings is. So um, it is a guess. Are there any other or additional clarifying questions from the board or anything that you would like us to put on a decision sheet list? I don't know. Um, Go ahead. <laughs> Great, thanks. Um, I just had uh, one thing with the Excel. Um, can we consider not taking away the, uh, the 0 0.6 teacher? Um, it, it's like in 8,300. I don't know the exact amount, but 8,300 additional that we'd have to pay for that. Um, I just don't want to lose that position. If anything, I think we should be beefing up Excel and maybe even adding more to that. So just losing doesn't feel good. I would, I just, if we could future consider that. And then just a question on ed techs. Um, it looks like we're losing them across the board too. And does that, are we having people shift to other positions? Our thing, is it because of COVID we needed people in different places? Um, that's just another area that I worry about losing people. So one clarification, Stephanie, that I want to make, the $8,300 decrease in the Excel budget is for the budget overall. It is not one-to-one -one, um, that the decrease in those two days is cost eighty three hundred dollars. It costs more than that. That just happens to be the amount when everything else shook out. Do you know what I mean? Well, um, not exactly. What do you mean about the uh, decrease in two days? So, so we, there is in this in this document there is a decrease of two days in ex, in Excel teacher days. Um, the cost. If I'm going to pull a number. Out of the air. If a teacher costs, it gets paid fifty thousand dollars. Then each day is worth ten thousand. So we would have decreased this budget by twenty, but because of other increased cost, um, that would have been savings. But because of other increases, it's only coming up to an eighty-three hundred dollars. So that there's not a one-to-one -one, uh, correlation. Adding those two days back will not cost eighty-three eighty. 
I gotcha. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then I forget what the other. Oh, okay. Well, you can yeah. talk to about yeah, the exactly. We did put. Um, we do have. There has been a loss of ed, some ed techs, but we're also put, covering some ed techs um, through the grants. Okay. Great. So, Thank you. And I think part of that too, because we're doing the negotiations with the ed techs now. And we have really tried to to beef that up because we know how yes. essential they are. Exactly. So we're hoping we're not going to lose anymore. We're going to keep. Right. Right. I just have one general idea. Could you, as I know, the whole budget increase was eight point something. What would it take to get us down to a five percent increase? I know I hate those questions. No, but actually. <laughs> And it's not bad. So let me take a look at the the, thing. the climate in certain towns being what it is, I yeah. And so do you want me okay, I'll let me let me calculate this first and then we can I mean if I pen my phone here I could do it myself. Five percent of what it would be. <clears throat> okay, to get to a 4.99% to taxpayers, we have to cut $753,500. Now, of that, if you look at some of the recommendations about putting some of these positions to the, the COVID grant funding, that's 386,000. And the, if you were to vote on the storage shed as well, that brings us down to a 6.43%. And I think it was, we need another, um, Another 292. That's it. Hold on a second. Let me. We won't stare at it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, I, you can tell me actually. No, but you, you know, look at it over the week. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to get a fairly close number for you. Um, and that would be. So that's where you're thinking is comfortable under. Like well, just, I don't know what other people on the board think, but that's a good. That was a good topic for our discussion yeah. for next week. Yeah, it's about two hundred. It's about it's just shy of three hundred thousand on top of that. Um, and the other thing that Nancy, you and I talked about that we had that did not make it to list for the um, for the decision sheet is fuel. As we all know, that's extremely volatile. We have not been able to lock in on a price in months. We've been looking. Um, usually January and February are, are price uh, decreases. There's usually a dip. There wasn't this year. All that kept happening is prices kept going up and up and they continue to do so. Um, even though they were going up, we could consider locking in, except nobody's locking in on any prices right now. We can't lock in on oil or anything like that. So uh, we're kind of at the whim of the markets and we'll keep an eye on it, but um, we, our, our budgets in here for gasoline, diesel, and heat, number two, heating oil, are um, low, I would say, I guess is, is the best word for that. Um, it it's just like they're about half of what it is actually. So heating oil was my last quoted price at $2.80 um, a gallon. I honestly haven't talked to him in the last few days. I don't know where it stands now, and I don't know if he can even get a price now because of the volatility. Um, I know that I've shouted with Brenda about gasoline and diesel. Those are prices, unfortunately, that we cannot lock in on because we do not purchase as much as many gallons as we purchase. We don't purchase enough to, to be at a fixed locked in price. Um, so fuel is definitely something we'll be watching over the coming weeks as we work through the budget. Um, and I will be doing my best to kind of figure that out, but 
that is an exposure for sure. What about food and nutrition? Is that kind of the same? So Abby's here. School and nutrition, we got some more uh, less than favorable news uh, this week. Um, the federal package that they were putting in um, had originally included the uh, meal waivers that are instituted this year, which feeds all kids for free, and it um, allows us to feed in different areas, right? Like you don't have to be sitting in the cafeteria eating the meal. And it also reimburses higher than the normal school nutrition program. They did not include it in the final draft of the bill they just passed. So that means next year, prices from the federal government will go down. We will have to work with the state on how to um, implement their no, you know, free meals for all kids and see what that looks like for reimbursement wise. But um, we'll get there. And Abby's here, she wants to. So we will continue to consider Maine. We will continue to have free meals, but it will be at a significantly lower reimbursement rate, um, which we did do our budget based off of, but it was a happy news for us. Um, we will at least be free, but yes, it affects other programming. So when Abby did her budget, we, we talked about this and she, we assumed that we were not going to get these waivers because that was kind of the, not the worst case scenario, but, you know, we, a less favored scenario. Um, so we, we think that budget is solid, um, but we were hoping for a different kind of mix. Plus, we need another 60000 to cover those two projects at the bottom, right? Um, so that is if you decide that they should come in. Like, that's part of all of these things, right? You're, you're looking at these positions and um, keeping them. You think they're important. You want to include them. Then those are two for consideration because we just got the pricing. These are, you know, it's a very lean budget. Um, as you know from the revenue sheet, uh, you know, it was a 2% increase based on the revenue we received the prior year, 2.4. But when you factor in that return, it really jumps up. Um, but it's, um, it's lean and it's all pretty much bodies. Right, there are a few things that are, you know, supplies or equipment and things like that, but most of most of the increases have to do with salaries and benefits. So one of the reasons why we all everybody stayed is that we can certainly chip away, you know, chip away and keep working through this and coming back next week with some additional items to add to this list so that we can discuss it as part of, you know, after our official business, we can move into a, a, another budget workshop to talk through that. Um, I don't know, um, like Travis and Denise and Stephanie and Victoria, uh, a number around five or a little under was, you know, just coming up. Is that somewhere where you would like us to put our efforts? And Lynn, is that where, somewhere where you would like us to put our efforts? Uh, this coming week as we're working through our administrative meetings. I mean, 5.1 or 2, I'm fine with that, but I just... Yeah, I'm good with the 5%. Yeah, it works for me. Um, it works for me, too. I don't want to... I don't want to cut bodies. Um, I, I think that coming out of this pandemic is going to take more work than we realize. And, um, so I just don't want to be cutting any positions or even if we can help it cutting any that we're thinking about adding. I agree with Denise. Um, I don't want to cut anybody either. And if we can get it, I don't know where to trim it. You guys will have to look at that, but yeah, just see what you can do to get it down. I mean, maybe even 6%. Yeah, 
I wouldn't really want to cut any existing positions. I would maybe look at cutting some of the new positions that we're considering. Like, you know, any chance we could get by with a half-time communications director? I mean, that would be good for them. Sure. Yep. Okay. All right. I know that's good. So we'll work through this um, this upcoming week and have more information on Thursday. Okay. Yeah. If you have any ideas during the week, don't hesitate to shoot me an email and we'll consider it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks okay. for staying. Thank, Thank you, all you. Of you guys. Thank you for all your work. Yeah, you did a great job.